Hello there. It's the last time we met Leave. Yeah, he has his arm back. It's great and all. Uh, it was a pain in the bloody ass to do everything here and there, but I got it. Oh, man, I got it. Now we're at the top of the dam. Now... This might be the climax. This might be the finish. I have no idea, but... Let's find out. A... Hey. And my ammo is not looking too hot. No, it's not. Uh, it's I uh, my. Sign. Uh, uh, I'll make it. I'll make it last. Before I do anything. Oh, I got inventory space. Yay. That's what I want. Inventory space. You know, I complain about inventory space the yeah, episodes ago, and now I'm like, no, I don't want free inventory. Oh. Major, I'm on the roof of the dam. The Citadel's been overrun. I repeat, the Citadel's been overrun. The whole situation's foobar. No survivors. Hold on. That's not fair. You're an ugly son of a bitch. Oh. I got a feeling the end is just gonna get frustrating. Once again, let's reload my gun. I barely have any ammo, and they expect me to do this. Uh... I mean, I got a magnum with a decent amount of bullets. We gotta take care of the ads first, for they are the annoying part. Alright, we'll skip the cutscene, we know what happens. the explosives are insta kills I'm just saying not a fan of that no uh. please uh, may I have some more more please uh, may I have Juke. You. I find the car. All right, he's still chasing me. God damn you, leave. Ugh. 
Do zombies keep coming up during the entire thing? So this is gonna get annoying fast. Oh, this is- oh no, this is gonna get annoying fast. Nope. Restart. Things reloaded. It just doesn't help their ads in the battle with the boss. One of my least favorite things in the bloody world. Oh, this boss has ads. Why? The boss is hard enough as it is. Yeah, but we gave it ads, so it's more difficult. Oh, th th thank you. Oh, it's my favorite thing in the world. A boss having ads, and on top of that, the environmental hazards are insta kill. Oh, even better. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly how to please me. Wait, what? God damn it! Die, you stupid! No, 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 no. God damn it! Yeah, I love it when the boss can also stun you. No, no. no. What else would I love about bosses with ads is when the boss stuns you on purpose, so then the ads can just grapple you and keep draining your health away. Oh god, there's so many ads.
Come on, baby. Come on. There has to be an end to them. They all can't just spawn forever. God damn it! Stop it! He's gonna spit. Close enough. Stop it. Alright, leave. You and me. Until he tires himself out. Oh, not yet, not yet. Spit. Alright. Charge. Charge again. He's tired. Spitting. It's charging. It's whipping. It's charging. I got this. I got this. It's spitting. Reload. I'll be able to get it after. He's spitting. I'm waiting for him. I'm, I'm going to knock him down. I'm going to reload the magazine. Shotgun ammo. I need to go to the box after. All right, go now. Go now. Just go now. Nope. 
it. Second, it's time. No, no, damn it, damn it. I thought he was dying. I was being an optimistic. I'm like, get tired, leave. He's spitting. Major! Major! That's hard to believe. I didn't think leave could get any nastier than he already was. Come on, we need to get out of here. The dam's gonna blow. Right, we better hurry. Raven! Raven, go get out of here! No. I won't leave another man behind. Not today, kid. Not today. You've already risked your life far too many times. This time, only one of us is walking away from here alive. The truth is undeniable. Fortune favors the bold. I accomplished my mission at the first light of dawn, and for once in my existence, the best plan was to not have a plan. Uh, what in, uh, Aiden! How in the hell did 
wounded you. Where? Oh no. Sorry to disappoint you, kid. I guess the great Sandman ain't so great after all. But after all of the lies lost, at least I managed to save one. What's going on? By all rights, you should be dead. And you're not. Wait. What? Always did that to you. That fucking guy! Ah! 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 Don't touch me! Stay away! Leave! He turned me into this freak! The antidote! I need it now! This? Give it to me now! I don't think that's gonna have an effect. Did it work? You bastard! You remember me? You... You mass-murdering piece of shit! I will never forgive you for taking her away from me! What? What the hell are you? Drop your gun right now! You fucker! You killed her! Why? What did my baby ever do to you? Hey, whoa, whoa, calm down. Too many people have died already. Why don't you drop the weapon so we can talk about it? Whatever happened, it's over. It's over. No! It's not over. Not by a long shot. Not until this... this guy pays for what he did to her. Listen, listen. I don't know you, sir. But you can trust me when I say the man who did all this is dead. The Major's a hero. He risked his life. He risked his life? Huh? For what? To murder tens of people? Including my wife? Huh? I was there, soldier boy. I saw what he did to her. My baby. Now, I suggest you get the fuck out of my way, or you can go to hell with them! I'm not gonna tell you again, sir. Drop your weapon, or I'm gonna shoot you where you stand. No matter what you think you saw. Stand down, Raven. Well, stand down. It's you, isn't it? Samuel. How do you know my name? Because I know more than what you think. But the only thing you really need to know is that I'm truly sorry. I never meant to hurt her. Not intentionally. Your wife, she was one of the few people I could really count on to. What's that supposed to mean, huh? Huh? Who, who are you people? He's the one who ripped my arm off and broke my neck, baby. While you just stood by and watched me die. No, that's not what happened. That's not how... That's not... She's dead! Sad baby. Are we really gonna argue over semantics? <laughs> just look at yourself. You're nothing but a frightened lab rat. Shut up! That's all you want! Shut That's up! That's all you ever want! Shut the fuck up! Just shut your mouth! Samuel, I... Stop! Just don't say another goddamn word! These people know everything about you. Fight it, they Samuel! They used you for their advantage. No! They this isn't them. real! You She's dead! Company property! Don't listen to her, Samuel! the moment you were born! Damn it! The voice isn't Sarah! off on that little cliffhanger. Well, if anything's uh, the show, only one gunshot was fired, not two or three. Hmm. So there'll probably be a sequel maybe down the line. Live 
Oh. Oh. This is me. Interesting. Gene signature confirmed. Welcome back, sir. Boot up the register. Ready to receive. Mission report K731. Personal code FG956-5061. Mission status completed. The material requested has been recovered. Of those involved, there's no one left. At least no one who knows what's really going on. I erased all traces of K's involvement. Hexacore Biogenetics will be blamed and held accountable for the mishap in Keen's sight. Good job, sir. Leave wasn't the one who shot him. Evidence number two intercepted voice messages of Major Sandman Vulcan. Voice message with encryption code XDR00035. Sarah, I would have liked to speak with you in person, but I'm afraid that's just not going to happen. So this is it. The moment has arrived. You know, I told you that I'd do whatever it takes to protect her, and now I gotta prove just that. Prove it to myself, to you, but mostly prove it to her, my precious little angel, Samantha. In exactly seven days, my man and I will be deployed to the Aegis Labs to recover samples of Castor and Pollux. After which, you know what I have to do. Oh, I know what you're thinking right now. I know. So many innocent lives lost to save just one. But she's my baby girl. So listen up. I want you to leave Keen Sight, you and your Samuel, and get as far away from the city as possible. The gears of destruction are already in motion, and nobody can stop them now. And even if they could, I wouldn't let them. If one day my conscience does feel a little less guilty, it'll only be because I've not only saved my daughter's life, but yours as well. I know you know what it means to truly love someone with every fiber of your being. And the choices you gotta make to hold on to that love, to be with that person and share one last day, one last minute, one last tantalizing second. I couldn't live with myself knowing that I didn't step up and do something. Even if it means burning in hell for eternity. <sighs> that should come easy compared to a living hell without her. Hope one day you can forgive me. But if you can't, saving Samantha will be enough. Number three, Sarah Carmichael's reporting to Sam Walker. Sam, sweetheart, I've been waiting for this day to come, wishing I didn't have to tell you the things you're about to hear. Yet, here goes nothing. The more elaborate the lie, especially one as grandiose and brazen as this, the more difficult it becomes to explain. I should have waited for you to come home, to speak with you in person, but I just can't do anything but record this. You won't be home before dark, 
by which time it'll probably be too late. There's a good chance they'll come here looking for me. <laughs> they. I guess you're wondering who I'm talking about. What I'm about to say will change your life forever. Change my life, too. What's happening, one way or another, was inevitable. But at the cost of many thousands of lives, it will also mean the end of our relationship. Listen to me. By now, all of Keen's sight is lost. He... He did it. He infected the whole goddamn town, sentencing the people here to a fate worse than death. He committed a truly unforgivable sin. The last hope for a crazy man being puppeted by even crazier people. The Kuronosu Company. I still don't understand how he could have done it, how anyone could have done it, even him, especially him. God damn you, Kuronosu! Hexacore! Damn you both to hell! Oh, Christ! We're just a bunch of filthy murderers. All of us. Sam, listen. What I wanted to say, if I wasn't a coward, is that even though I've always loved you, I've never been completely honest with you. Beneath this city, behind your disease, lies a tangled web of secrets linked to the company. I would have told you sooner rather than being obliged by this tragedy, but I couldn't and wasn't ready yet. I was afraid of how it might affect us. Sorry. 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 It kills me to tell you this, but I'm not who you think I am. You already know that I work for Hexacore, but what you don't know is that my job isn't limited to mere administration. My field of expertise is actually the supervision of research studies, monitoring one of our most important tests, you. For decades now, our government has been experimenting in its own backyard, testing chemical weapons on an unsuspecting America. The project is called Truman, and Keen Sight is one of the most illustrious testing zones, with Hexacore overseeing the whole shebang since the 40s. You, and hundreds of others like you, are the end result of these tests. And we've been tasked with keeping you in check and gleaning as much data as possible about your condition. I can attest, however, that it took very little effort for you to become the most important part for me. Because... Because I actually fell in love with you. And it wasn't just a job for me anymore. So when someone asks if I love my work, I tell them, yes. Thanks to you, I do. And maybe that's why I've never had the courage to tell you before. And more importantly, I would never leave this place without you of my own free will, if given the choice. Hold on. I hear something. There... There's somebody out there. Number four, ID tags of Sarah Carmichael, Hexacore Biogenetic Supervisor, Code 27. I finally did it. I'm finally in charge of one of the most important research studies in the country. It took years to perfect the Truman Project together with those Yes Men at Hexacore. Maybe longer still to convince the Was that Washington DC dinosaur Murphy to put me in charge of the whole operation. Due to their backward, backwards way of thinking, I was, I was either too young or too girly or too black. But in the end, uh, they had no choice but to recognize the crowns of my achievements. 
In under 30 days, I'll be transferred to Keen Sight, and from what the company tells me, it'll be a one-way trip. Maybe that's what excites me the most. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, dear, there's more. Oh, I guess we're reading this. January 4th, 1992. I've only been here a few months, but I feel like I've already tucked myself snug as a bug in a rug. A uh, rural com- oh, sorry. Oof. Snug as a bug in a rural com- community. Sometimes I feel a bit sorry for these people of keen sight. Or maybe it's better to refer to them as their proper names. Guinea pigs. Other times, I envy them. Their simple small town lives filled with small town values. After all, the company ensures they're, uh, they're safe inside their giant petri dish closed off from, uh, from all the shit of the outside world. I like to think of that I too have helped create a sort of paradise here, or perhaps another circle of hell. I'm still not sure yet. July 3rd, 1993. The most difficult part of the Truman Project is officially underway, or at least in regards to my active role in the field as researchers stationed here must have frequent contact with a subject in order to control it and i'm no exception to the rule indeed i'll have to lead by example at any rate any rate tomorrow i'll meet my special to be monitored special to be monitored yeah and judging from reports it's clear that this one will possibly be the most important part of the whole study I'll have to be on my best behavior once again. Meanwhile, I'll be scratching at my arms for days. Just because everyone got the same chip integrated in their arm doesn't mean it's a good thing. After all, we're researchers, not guinea pigs. The government is experimenting on with experimenting on with the program. Fortunately, however, these rule these are the rules of the game, and I can't back out now. January seventh. 1994. Oh, Jesus, I haven't felt this good in years. The Truman Project is proceeding as planned, not to mention the experiment, too. I just can't hide my excitement thanks to my work. Oh, whoops. I've been doing with my subject. That being said, this isn't exactly an official report. I could say my subject, Sam, for short. The person I've been tracking and recently approached. Well, I'm starting to think uh, something particular is happening. I know I shouldn't get this attached, but the company asked me to get closer, so... And the heart wants what the heart wants, right? Where's the harm in that? May 4th, 1994. With a recent transfer of high-level personnel to the new office space atop the dam, we find ourselves butting heads with the men from Hexacore's special unit. Mind you, Hades agents look like rock-hard war machines who seldom interact with anyone outside their circle. And with HAF pilots seem to be normal kids despite the demanding tasks the company often gives them. Though one in particular seems to be catching the attention of all the office ladies. His name is Hayden, though everyone's uh, been calling him Sandman after the mishap in Groom Lake. I have no idea how he made it out alive, but I'd like to know more. September 22nd, 1994. Hayden, what an extraordinary man, even in the face of difficulties he's endured. Somehow, I got him to open up his past again, discovered that his wife left years ago because she couldn't bear the weight of his job. She even left him to take care, of, uh, take care for their only daughter, baby Samantha. I really feel some kind of connection to this man, so much so, in fact, I'm feeling exactly what I'm feeling for Sam. How I'm going to deal with this, only time will tell. I, prob I should probably just concentrate on my work. August 15th, 1996. I thought I could handle it. Instead, I wish I'd never gotten involved in this pile of poo. I've been working on the treatment project for the company for four years now, but it looks like... But it looks like... Like... Looks like... like but it looks like this isn't going to end the way I thought it would. We didn't come here to improve people's lives, we came here to test weapons of mass destruction. If that weren't bad enough, even though we've signed away our lives to these hexacore bastards with their government backing, they still won't lift a finger to help us. Any of us. 
Hayden told me his daughter contacted a terrible disease that requires an experimental treatment that the company just won't cover. That's why he's been so distant these past few months. I want to do something to help. I'll always feel close to him, forever. In the meantime, at least some good news came from this. Sam asked me to marry him, a beacon of hope in all the darkness that surrounds me. A reminder that there are more important things in life. Now I know who my heart belongs to, and I need to devote my life to him. I need to do my job as effectively as possible to make him feel better. March 28th, 1997. I don't want to believe it, but Hayden asked me to meet him just outside town to reveal a scheme. There wasn't much time left to save his daughter, and the only way he can do it is by committing an act so utterly despicable it borders on nefarious. It seems that Coron Coronasu is an international pharmaceutical company made a deal with Hayden to save his daughter in exchange for the destruction of hundreds, if not thousands, of lives, along with Hexacore as a whole. Or still, it'll bring the end of our government it'll bring our government to its knees by revealing the truth about experiments on the American people that have been ongoing for decades. He must have lost it, completely freaked out. Nothing even not even loss of a loved one can justify such a stupid and reckless decision. I'm pretty sure those bastards are using him. I just don't understand why the hell he doesn't see it. I need to talk some sense into him. I'm sure those are just words of despair of a desperate father, but if he doesn't listen to reason, I'll have no choice but to report him to the company's internal affairs department, though I don't know if I could live with what they do to him. July 14th, 1997. Hayden left the base and took a few days to leave. Sadly, his daughter, Samantha, didn't make it. Her little heart gave out just two days ago. I feel sorry for him, but this could be a blessing in disguise. Now he won't have any reason to enact the nef that nefarious scheme on his of his. But from, from what I gather, he's going on a long journey to a medical center where she was being treated, though I'm pretty sure he'll come back soon. When he does, I'll be there to support him in whatever way is possible. Time to log off. Oh, that's Sandman's daughter. And she's not dead. Oh, I'm sorry. A bee. Eh, could be worse. Alright, so yeah, that is the end of Daymare. I enjoyed the game. Um, the puzzles, for the most part, were fine. Some of them were meh. The story was honestly pretty good. I actually was captivated by it and was intrigued to see what happened in the future. And with it ending on the cliffhanger, it's bad that ends on the cliffhanger like that, but also it's good because I want to see what happens in the future. Which right now I believe San they have a game called uh, uh, Daymare Sandcastle 1994. Which is a prequel to this, so a sequel still has yet to come out, but that'll be in the future probably. Uh, the characters are intriguing. Uh, the voice acting uh, for Sam, though, was a bit rough at times. Everyone else was okay. For the most part, for a low budget, very inspired by Resident Evil game, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Sure, I got quite mad at the end. Who oh, boy, did I ever. But, you know, I did it. Oh boy, I did it. I can only imagine what, heck, what the uh, hex core, whatever that one is, with the difficulty, the hardest one is. Oof. Maybe one day I'll 100% complete this in my own time, like, if I feel like it, like I am doing with Village slowly right now. But this game was good. I am intrigued, and I'm going to watch what this company does in the future, and hopefully. They make more games like this and improve on their flaws of this game. I actually quite enjoyed it. 
And I think it ends this one. So, for the last time in this game, goodbye. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested, I hope you buy it. But if you're hesitant, buy it when it's on sale and give it a try. It's not high budget, but it's pretty good. I actually enjoyed it. But I'll see you later at a different time, a different place. Have a good night, and see ya.